Now look, I understand why a lot of you that watch my videos enjoy WrestleMania 17. There was some good on that show, and there was, in my opinion, a lot of bad on that show, which is the reason why I don't particularly like it. But you all have your preferences, and I respect that. You all like WrestleMania 17, and for the good reasons, there are a lot of valid points. For the bad reasons, there are a lot of valid points as well. But I don't think WrestleMania 17 was the greatest in-ring action WrestleMania of all time. In fact, I don't even think WrestleMania 17 was the greatest overall WrestleMania of all time. I think that that honor belongs to WrestleMania 19, two short years later. WrestleMania 19 was highlighted by five of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. It was highlighted by a solid undercard. And it was overall the greatest single WrestleMania of all time, in my opinion. A lot of old school fans are going to say WrestleMania 3. A lot of old school fans that love the Attitude Era are going to say WrestleMania 14, or in this case, WrestleMania 17. But for me, WrestleMania 19 did exactly what it should have, delivered exactly how it should have, and then some. WrestleMania 19 worked in every way, shape, and form, and it was the greatest WrestleMania of all time, and I stand by saying that. And I don't think there's going to be a lot of argument against me. You look at some of the matches on this card... And it's a shoe in for top three greatest WrestleMania of all time. It is. I personally don't think WrestleMania 17 was that good. I think WrestleMania 19 worked perfectly. You know, you open up with a solid match between Matt Hardy and Rey Mysterio. And yes, I agree that this match should have gotten a couple more minutes on the card. But it was still a WrestleMania-worthy opening match for the Cruiserweight, Cruiserweight excuse me, Championship. It still worked. It was still good. It was still fine. The crowd was into it. I was into it. It worked. The one complaint that I had was maybe Ray should have went over, but I'm not going to knock it. This match definitely did not hurt the show. One match that I think that all of us would like to forget is The Undertaker facing Big Show and A-Train in this handicap match. Now, while it is not as bad as Undertaker vs. Giant Gonzalez and Undertaker vs. King Kong Bundy and hell, even Undertaker vs. Brock Lesnar, it was really, really bad. And we're just not going to talk about that and just ignore that it ever happened on the show. Then you get two consecutive triple threat matches. First for the women's title, Trish Stratus defeating Victoria and Jazz in another pretty solid match. This was the third straight year of doing a triple threat for the women's title. So, um, you know, maybe I thought that they should have just did a one-on-one -on -one match instead of repeating what they've been doing for years. But this match was solid. This match definitely did not hurt the show. And, in fact, it actually helped the show quite a bit. And as did the triple threat tag team match for the tag team championships between Team Angle, Los Guerreros, and Chris Benoit and Rhino. Uh, Another solid match. I agree that maybe this should have gotten a couple more minutes on the card, but it was a really good match to sit through. But you cannot begin to talk about really good matches until you talk about, excuse me, Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels. This match right here just took this WrestleMania on an upward climb to the top of the mountain as the greatest WrestleMania of all time. This was perhaps the five, the greatest stretch of matches in a WrestleMania. You begin with Shawn versus Jericho, then you get Triple H, Booker T, you get Hogan McMahon, you get Rock Austin 3, and then you get Brock and Angle. But this match between Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho was perhaps the greatest mid-card WrestleMania match of all time. From an in-ring standpoint, from a storytelling standpoint, and from even an aftermath standpoint when Jericho went to hug Shawn Michaels and then low-blowed the crap out of him. It worked absolutely 100% perfectly, 10 out of 10, gold star, I don't care. 
Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho was probably in the top five greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Probably. And easily the greatest mid-card match in the history of WrestleMania. A close second goes to Angle versus Michaels two years later, but this match was definitely up there. Now, while I did say Triple H versus Booker T was a good match from an in-ring standpoint, this match pisses me off for the reason of Booker T not going over. Now, I understand that, you know, Triple H is Triple H, and we need to spotlight Triple H in whatever way we can because he's God. But, you know, from the way they were building up Booker T in this match and, you know, trying to get the crowd on his side, trying to get the crowd to get his story... It would have been nice if Booker T went over here. It would have worked so much better. And it would have been such a cool surprise in an otherwise great show. And it would have just added another element to the show to make this show even better than great. But we didn't get that. And it's kind of sad. Because this match was a really good match. It just sucks that... You know, with the way they built up Booker T as this underdog and highlighting his life story, you would think that all eyes, all fingers are pointing here to Booker T winning this match, but it didn't happen. And like I said, that's sad, but I'm not going to take that away from this match. Then you get a really fun match, and it was Hulk Hogan versus Mr. McMahon. Now, the way I would have preferred it is if Hogan faced Austin at 18, faced Rock at 19, and then faced Vince at 20. But, we finally get the one-on-one -on -one battle between Hulk Hogan and Mr. McMahon. The storytelling in this match was beyond perfect. You know, you have these two, rock, these two guys that did such great business together, had several falling outs together, and then you add the element of Rowdy Roddy Piper, who hates both of these guys, and you put him in the match, and I would have liked it if he actually hit both of them with the pipe, but to see him come out and hit Hogan with the pipe, signifying his hatred of Hulk Hogan, it made that match even better. And no, this match was not a technical five-star wrestling classic. This match was not the greatest in-ring match of all time. But it told a phenomenal story. And Hulk Hogan won here, and despite my hatred of him, it worked perfectly again. The second match on this show that worked perfectly was Hulk Hogan versus Mr. McMahon in the street fight. You know, the storytelling elements worked. Hell, Vince McMahon, when do you see him climb to, climb to the top of a ladder and pull off a fucking leg drop through a table? When the hell do you see that? He doesn't need to do any of this, but he did. And all it, all it did was freaking put on a show. And that deserves respect. And this match deserves recognition as a really damn good match. Then you get to the third installment of Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock. And we finally get The Rock win that he's been hoping for for the first three, uh, for the first couple of matches. This match was, in my opinion, the second best of their three. And the only reason why I put this match ahead of 17 is because of everything that happened with that match at 17. The entire ending of that match completely ruined the goddamn match for me. And I know I'm not the only one that thinks so. But this match was not the best, but it certainly was not the worst. Rock vs. Austin 3 was a really good match, and it was a really good send-off for Stone Cold Steve Austin in what was going to ultimately be his last match. I give them all the credit in the world. I give Stone Cold Steve Austin so much credit because the night before he was hospitalized and he still made it to WrestleMania and he still put on this match. It was not the greatest match, but it definitely was not the worst. And again, everything that happened in this match with the story, everything that happened with this match with the in-ring action, 
and everything that happened with this match, with the end, worked perfectly. Three of the four featured matches worked absolutely perfectly. And then you get the fourth of the five featured matches that worked perfectly, and that was Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle for the WWE Championship. This match was deserve was deserving of main eventing WrestleMania 19. I will give them that. They were trying at that time to make sure that Brock Lesnar was the guy. Brock Lesnar was the featured guy in the WWE. They were trying to build him as a monster, but they were trying to build him as the next top guy. And ultimately, that's what they did. They put Brock in the main event against Kurt Angle, and they usually had good, good, good in-ring chemistry, excuse me, and this match was no different. This WWE Championship match was fantastic. You know, you had the little botch at the end, which gave Brock a concussion, which injured Angle too, but it definitely did not hurt the match. In fact, the improvise was actually fine. Another F5 for Kurt Angle. He took, I believe, three. It worked very well. The undercard worked well. The mid-card match between Michaels and Jericho worked perfectly. Hogan versus Vince worked perfectly. Rock Austin worked perfectly. Brock Angle worked perfectly. This match, this, excuse me, this mania was easily the greatest WrestleMania of all time because every, almost every element of this show worked perfectly. And that I can look back on and appreciate because WrestleMania 19 will go on and live on as the single best mania ever.